Let's now discuss the time dependence of expectation values. Here is what we have learned so far. The time evolution operator when the Hamiltonian is independent of time has the form u of t comma t0 equal to 0 is equal to exponential minus i h t divided by h bar. We said that solving the initial value problem becomes simple if we use the basis such that the base kits are also energy eigenkits. When we say that they are energy eigenkits, we mean that each of the base kit, uh, each of the base kits satisfies an eigenvalue equation of this form. Now we can find the state at any later time given the initial state. We just expand the initial state in terms of the chosen basis and then apply this time evolution operator to it. Okay, and you get the state at a later time. The state at a later time we found is given by sum over k prime c k prime exponential minus i e k prime t divided by h bar multiplied by k prime. Okay, so we see that the difference between the initial state and the state at a later time is that each of the expansion coefficients in the initial state has been multiplied by a phase factor exponential minus i e k prime t divided by h bar. So this is how states evolve with time. Okay, now let's see how expectation values change in time. Suppose that at time t equal to 0, the initial state is one of the eigenstates of an observable A that commutes with the Hamiltonian. Okay, so we are taking the initial state as ket A prime where ket a prime is an eigen ket of operator a. So it, it satisfies this eigenvalue equation. We, we also say that a is an operator that commutes with the Hamiltonian. This means that, as we have shown in our last class, uh, ket a prime is also an eigen ket of the Hamiltonian. So we will have the eigenvalue equation h acting on ket a prime equal to e a prime multiplied by ket a prime. Okay. Now let's look at the expectation value of some other observable, let's say B, which need not commute with A or with H. Okay, so we are now looking at another observable, observable B that in general does not commute with A. All right, so commutator of A with B is not equal to zero, or commutator of H with B is also not equal to zero. In this case, how does the expectation value of B change with time? Okay, this is the question we are trying to answer. So we shall take ket A prime as the initial state. All right, and as we said, ket A prime is an eigen ket of operator A. It's also an eigen ket of the Hamiltonian with eigen value E A prime. Now, if this is the initial ket, we can find the ket or the state at a later time simply by acting the time evolution operator on the initial ket. Right, so this gives us the state of the system at a later time. Now this is the notation that we are using. Uh, here we have got ket a prime comma t0 equal to 0 at time t. All right, this means that this is the state of a system at time t, all right, and whose initial state, whose state at t0 equal to 0 was ket a prime. All right, so we have all information in this notation. All right, so this is the state of the system at time t and its initial state that is at t0 equal to 0 was ket a prime. All right, so we have included all the information in this notation. Anyway, the state at a later time is given by the action of the time evolution operator on the initial state. All right. Now we are talking about the situation where u of t comma 0 has the form exponential minus i h t divided by h bar okay so this means that ket a prime comma t0 equal to 0 at a later time t is equal to exponential minus i h t divided by h bar acting on ket a prime all right now since ket a prime is also an eigen ket of the hamiltonian we have seen that we can write this as this is equal to exponential minus i e a prime t divided by h bar multiplied by ket a prime. All right. We have just used the eigenvalue equation h acting on ket a prime is equal to 
E A prime multiplied by ket A prime. Okay. Now let's uh, talk about the expectation value, the initial expectation value. Right, the initial expectation values. We have seen the definition for expectation value. So let's say that the expectation value of an operator B at time t equal to zero is simply given by bra A prime operator B get A prime. This was the definition for the expectation value if these states are normalized to one. Right? So we are assuming that all these states are normalized to one. Then this is the expectation value at, uh, at an earlier time. What's the expectation value at any time t or at a later time t? All right. So in this case, the expectation value is given by because this is the state at a later time. All right. This is the state at a later time. So we can write this as bra a prime comma t0 equal to 0 time t operator b and then get a prime comma t0 equal to 0 time t. All right. This is simply the definition for expectation value. Now here we have got bra a prime comma t0 equal to 0 at time t. Okay, what we have calculated here is get a prime comma t0 equal to 0 at time t. So let's find the corresponding bra or let's find the dual correspondence of this equation. Right? So the corresponding bra becomes bra a prime t0 equal to 0 at time t is equal to. All right? We know that when you go to the dual space, the complex numbers become complex conjugates all right so if we take the complex conjugate of this you have to substitute i by minus i and then this becomes exponential i e a prime t divided by h bar and this ket a prime becomes bra a prime so let me write it like this this becomes bra a prime exponential minus i e, sorry this minus is gone when you go to the bra space so this is exponential i e a prime t divided by h bar okay now we can use this here to calculate the expectation value of b at a later time so expectation value of b you just substitute this in here is bra a prime exponential i e a prime t divided by h bar okay and then we have got operator b here and this ket all right so we know the expression for this ket, it is written here. So this is exponential i e a prime t. There's a minus, right? Because there's a minus here. Minus i e, I e a prime t divided by h bar I multiplied by a ket a prime. Okay. Now these are numbers, right? This is not an operator. What we have here is the eigenvalue. So these are numbers and operators commute with numbers. So we can bring this together. All right, and you see that they cancel because this is exponential i e a prime t divided by h bar. This is exponential minus i e a prime t divided by h bar. Okay, so they multiply to give us one. They multiply to give one. So this becomes bra a prime b get a prime. So the expectation value of b at time t is bra a prime b get a prime. This is also the expectation value. This was also the expectation value at time t equal to zero. All right. So we see that the expectation value of any operator, all right, do not change with time in this case. All right. They, they are not changing with time. They, they remain the same. All right. So we have got the same expectation value at a later time also. Again, you notice that this is possible because we have chosen the initial state as an energy eigenkit. So if the initial state is an energy eigenkit, then the expectation values of operators do not change. Okay, that's what we see here. In other words, the expectation value is now independent of time. So the expectation value of any observable taken with respect to an energy eigenstate does not change with time. In other words, if the system is in an energy eigenstate, then the expectation value of observables remain the same. They are time independent. They are stationary. For this reason, an energy eigenstate is often referred to as a stationary state. Now, what if the initial state is not an energy eigenstate, but a superposition of energy eigenstates? 
Let's suppose we have the initial state get alpha comma t0 equal to 0 is equal to sum over a prime c a prime get a prime. All right. Then we know that the state at any later time is given by alpha comma 0, alpha comma t0 equal to 0, t. Okay. Get. We write it as a get. This is equal to the unitary op unitary time evolution operator exponential minus i h t divided by h bar acting on the initial ket, all right, and the initial ket is the superposition. So let's write it as sum over a prime c a prime ket a prime, all right. This ket a prime are still energy eigenkets, okay. Now this is an operator, c a prime uh, are numbers, all right. So we can take this inside, all right. We can take this inside. So you can write this as sum over a prime c a prime exponential minus i h t divided by h bar acting on get a prime now since this get a prime are again energy eigen gets which satisfy the eigenvalue equation h uh, acting on get a prime is equal to e a prime multiplied by get a prime we can write this as sum over a prime c a prime exponential minus i e a prime t divided by h bar uh, acting on or multiplied by ket a prime okay so in order to find the expectation value we also need bra uh, the, the corresponding bra all right the corresponding bra of this ket all right so we will write this as bra alpha comma t0 equal to 0 at time t this is equal to you just take the dual correspondence of this expression. We know that the numbers become complex conjugates when, when you go to the dual space. So C A prime will become C S prime star. All right. And this exponential minus I E A prime T becomes exponential plus I E A prime T and ket A prime becomes bra A prime. Okay. So I'll write this as bra A prime. So there is a summation sum over a prime so since we have sum over a prime here we'll use a different dummy index we'll write it as sum over a double prime and c a double prime star okay they have become complex conjugates when we go to the bra space all right and then we have got uh, exponential yeah, exponential i e a prime t divided by h bar and then finally bra a prime okay now we can calculate the expectation value of b like this it is bra alpha comma t0 equal to 0 time t operator b and then get alpha comma t0 equal to 0 at time t okay now you just substitute for get alpha comma t0 at time t you substitute this expression and for bra you substitute this expression okay so here is the expectation value for operator b so what we have in this first square bracket is actually bra alpha comma t0 equal to 0 at time t okay here is operator b and the second square bracket here is actually get alpha comma t0 equal to 0 at, at time t okay notice that here uh, we use slightly different dummy indices all right in the previous slide we use dummy indices a double prime for the bra and a prime for the ket here we have just used a different dummy index it doesn't matter you could as well use some other dummy index all right so whether you write a prime here or a double prime here it doesn't matter you just make sure that you write different dummy indices in in a multi in a multiplication like this in an expression like this okay now we see that we can combine the numbers let's put the numbers together we have got c a prime star and c a double prime here since numbers commute with operators we can just collect all these numbers all right we also have two summations sum over a prime and sum over a double prime so let's put them together sum over a prime sum over a double prime let's put this c a prime star and c a double prime together all right so that's what we have here now we see that this order cannot be changed bra cannot be changed bra a prime operator b get a double prime all right we cannot mix this up it 
has to be in the same order. All right. So we write this as bra A prime operator B get A double prime, which is what we have here. And the only term left is this is again a number. So it doesn't matter. We can take it to the other side of operator B and we can combine it with this term. We can combine it using the expression exponential of A multiplied by exponential of B can be written as exponential of A plus B. Okay, we see that there are common terms here. For example, in both terms, we have got I T divided by H bar. Okay, so we can take minus I uh, minus I divided by H bar outside, and then we are left with E A prime T minus E A double prime T. We can also take the T outside. So multiplying these two terms, we get exponential minus I E A double prime minus E A prime T divided by H bar. Okay, so now the expectation values are time dependent. All right, there is a time dependence here. They actually consists of oscillating terms. All right, so these terms are actually oscillating because this is of the form exponential i omega t etc. That we have seen uh, when we have discussed harmonic oscillator even in classical mechanics. All right, so these are oscillatory terms. Okay. So this time the expectation value consists of oscillating terms whose angular frequencies. Now you look at this. This is this has the dimensions of energy and this divided by h bar h bar has dimensions of frequency. All right. So what we have here is a quantity with the dimensions of frequency. We can denote it like this omega a double prime a prime. Okay. So we have expectation value. Uh, that consists of oscillating terms whose angular frequencies are determined by omega a double prime a prime is equal to e a double prime minus e a prime divided by h bar. Okay. Now this is called Niels Bose frequency condition. You might have studied such terms when we discussed or when you studied uh, the Bose atom model, etc. Right. So this. Uh, the oscillating terms have frequencies determined by this condition. Okay. In this class, we discussed the time evolution of expectation values. If the state is an energy eigenkette, then we found that the expectation values are time independent. The expectation values of operators do not change with time. Okay. For this reason, we said we uh, usually refer to energy eigenkettes as stationary states. Okay. Now, if the state of a system is not an energy eigenkette, but a superposition of energy eigenkettes, then we found that expectation values of operators become time dependent. In fact, the expression for the expectation value includes oscillatory terms. And the oscillation frequency corresponding to these terms are given by Bohr's condition omega a double prime a prime is equal to e a double prime minus e a prime divided by h bar. Okay, so with that, let's conclude the discussion of uh, time evolution of expectation values. Okay, thank you.